And the nice thing about prompts is you don't necessarily have to understand code to write a prompt because it's, mm -hmm. it's done in human language. Although, like you said, you're going to see a ton more jobs where people are like, we need more people to work on, on our algorithm, on our AI, on our platform. And that's where, you know, if you're coming out of school and you're in software engineering, you're going to be fine. Right. But like, if you're, I would be more concerned if like you're coming out of school and you're like, have a degree in literature, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, um, that would be like, uh, you know, after the in industrial revolution has kicked off and you're like, I'm going to be a cobbler. Oh crap. All the shoes are being made in the factory now. <laughs> yeah. Um, there will always be, there will always be, you know, the, the, that person that's just like, I am like, you know, top tier cobbler that mm -hmm. is innovating and it is experienced. And I am the person that is basically directing, you know, creating the silhouettes for, for the company or doing whatever, like, you know, you're always going to have that person that's like disruption proof. Uh, Kevin Rose talks about, uh, quite often he uses this, this, uh, this example of, uh, this, this dude who has in Japan and Tokyo, like he's, I think he actually said there's like a Starbucks across the street that, or you could put a Starbucks across the street, but he has aged coffee. So he has these beans that are like 20, 30 years old. And like, he's been doing this for forever and you go there and it's a small little nook and he will sit there and do a pour over that took 20, 25 minutes mm -hmm. and you sit there and he only does three of them at a time to make sure that like they're tiled in and you sit there and there is no rush. There is no to go. There is no nothing it is an experience. And you, you do that. And like, his point was like that guy is disruption proof. You could put Starbucks's uh, every single you know corner around there, and there, that guy is always going to be busy. Because like for example, me when I go to Tokyo, I'm going to go to that guy's place. I'm going to try that, and I, I'm down to spend an enormous amount of money because I want the experience. You know, I, I want that guy has something that is that is unique, and so I think that is part of what some people don't quite like my, my general thing is I think like the 1% of people that are like at the top of their field or are like doing the most unique thing on the fringes. Like I, I think those people are going to continue to have success, but I think it's all the people that are, you know, just kind of having a relatively generic They're They're doing an okay job. It's a job. They don't really do mm -hmm. anything super unique. I think those people are going to be out of a job soon. I'm kind of curious because you and I are both, you know, experts in marketing, like we know the field. And, mm -hmm. and I, I think it'd be interesting to kind of like uh, go down the rabbit hole a little bit on how, you know, you, you see the marketing industry changing, because I think that might, I think there's going to be a lot of commonalities, how we see the marketing field evolving and adapting that would also kind of reflect larger society. But how, how do you see next five, 10 years, like the landscape and marketing like kind of changing both with AI, but I'm also curious based on your understanding of the neuroscience, how you think that the AI might be able to hack that, which is really interesting. I think consolidation is inevitable. Like you said, when, or we were talking about like the cobbler example, right? Mm -hmm. Nike came in Reebok, like big shoe companies were using machines to make shoes. There's always like bespoke industry that the prices go way up because they're doing things by hand. It's more natural, whatever. There's always opportunities, but it's like you have to figure out where they are, right? What is it like Thursday? Is it called Thursday Boot Company? They do everything by hand, right? Um, yeah. And they're doing fairly well, as I understand it. They've been expanding their product lines and stuff. They just started with boots, basically. But everything's done by hand, hand sewn, you know. So, <clears throat> so they have a different story to tell. They're like, you know, get something handcrafted you know, it's, it's going to last longer. It's better made. So there's always a narrative that any company can use, even in the face of a juggernaut corporation, right? Like you said, the guy with the coffee in Tokyo, aged beans, I do pour over. Starbucks doesn't do that. They may do pour over, but it's probably just a real fast, like, you know, pour the hottest water you can. Yeah. 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 It's not art. Yeah. And so, so I think there's a level of craftsmanship. I think there's a level of something being a little bit more bespoke that there's always going to be an audience for at the same time, I think, you know, like you said, on one, one end of the spectrum, there's going to be these people that still are disruption proof. And then in between that, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that get scooped out of that because like you said, they're average, they're not craftsmen. They're just doing a job because it pays them money. And I think that's where 
AI is going to start coming in and going, yeah, I can do that job. I can do that job. I can do that job. As far as the neuroscience goes, it's hard to say because most of my uh, study around neuroscience has been strictly storytelling. So I look at it from a marketing standpoint of like, how can I differentiate my business and how can I tell a different story or narrative that separates me from potentially larger competition or, you know, uh, it's like that, that old, uh, that madman it's toasted, you know, it's like, (laughs) what does that mean? Nothing. (laughs) Yeah. But it sounds better, right? Like it's different and nobody else is saying that they toast their tobacco or whatever it was. I think it was like lucky strikes marketers that start to help people differentiate themselves. I think there's going to be a, probably a, a very strong narrative. That's no, we use humans. These guys use AI. We use humans, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then they'll talk about how, you know, AI can't do this, 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 but our humans can. Right. And mm-hmm. so I think there's going to be some of that, uh, from a marketing standpoint to try to differentiate a way but at the same time, in five years from now, they're almost already there. It's click a button, AI goes in, creates a landing page, creates a funnel, <laughs> sets mm-hmm. up a bunch of emails for follow up, is sending text messages out on your behalf, like, you know, doing a lot of stuff that like maybe a junior marketer might be tasked with doing. Well, the AI can do it now and mm-hmm. it does a pretty good job. It's 90 some odd percent of the way there. Yeah, maybe it's goofs up every now and again, but a lot of companies are going to be like, yeah, I'd rather just pay a hundred bucks a month for this software. And instead of paying somebody, I don't know, depending, I I guess where you work, 60, 70, 80, hundred grand, you know, like Mm -hmm. to do the same job. So that's a problem. Um, and then, you know, that's where I look at, okay, how do you retrain people, um, so that they can survive and that we don't get a, have the economy crash because everybody's unemployed what new industries are going to come out of AI, right? Because every time there's a new, you know, the industrial revolution comes out, then there's new technology that comes from like something like electricity or st- or steam. There's new industries that pop up because what we uh, weren't able to do, we are now. And somebody looks at that and goes, I think there's an opportunity in the market. So I don't think it's doom and gloom. I don't think it has to be. I just think that it requires us to, especially entrepreneurs to look at the landscape and try to figure out like what new thing could be built out of this new technology. And then potentially on the other side of that, there may be a lot of jobs and it may not be, you have to be an AI programmer. It just may be this new industry sprung up because we couldn't do this thing before because it required maybe too many people, but now the AI can do this whole thing for us. And now I can hire people to do the other part that AI AI can't do. So I don't know, like it's, it's really hard to predict the future. I think everything that we know about AI, like we talked about the iceberg, like there's so much about AI that is the top of the iceberg that's sticking out of the water. And then there's so much below the surface that either we don't understand about AI or we don't know what's coming down the pipe because of AI. There's companies right now, I'm sure, that are in stealth that are working on something that's with AI that's going to potentially create a new industry. And we just, we're not there yet, so we don't know what that potential is. So I'm not necessarily doom and gloom about AI, but I'm also not, this is the best thing ever because, like I said, it's just you look back at history and you're like, things are going to get disrupted. People are going to get displaced. It could affect a large portion of society. And how do you deal with that? And Mm-hmm. I don't think the answer to that is to put everybody on welfare, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it just, you know, it kills innovation. It kills the human spirit. And so we've got to figure out a way to be able to give pr- people purpose on the other side of this disruption. Yeah. I, w- I want to touch base on that a little later, but on, you know, it's interesting. You, you meant, you know, Hey, this is, this is made by humans. I find it so interesting that the flipping is now happening where, I saw a bunch of AI based companies, you know, two, three years ago before the GBT kind of explosion being like, you know, made by robots or, you know, whatever. And that was like a differentiating factor. It was cool and cutting edge. And everyone was like, well, that's really cool. And it was an exciting thing. Yeah. Until they realized they were taking their, they can potentially take their jobs. Yeah. (laughs) Take our germs. You know, like it's just, it's, it's happening where now I can already see that there's certain industries 
it's and it's not that common right now, but I have seen some people like say like made by humans or, or something like that. And like I see that flipping happening over the next couple of years where in the bottom of the, the website footer, you know, it's like made with love in New York. It's going to be like made with humans in New York. I think that story that that these brands are, are all saying like, hey, we're bespoke. Hey, we're custom. Hey, we're whatever. Like, I, I think that human touch is going to be increasingly and really important to that. 